There we go. It's Monday. No matter where we are, where we are, we join together for our topic for today and also for Monday motivation. So right now I am so elated about the class that I had yesterday that I just can't, I, I've just been talking about it. You know, I was in Orlando. I'm still in Orlando, actually. We had an amazing live class. So one of the questions that somebody asked me in the live classes, what's the difference between the V2 program and the videos that I see you doing on YouTube? And I think that was such an amazing question because a lot of people think that when they watch the YouTube or watch my social media, they're actually doing V2 and it's not the same at all. So here, when we do the Monday and Wednesdays classes, what we're trying to do is we are trying to do a topic from just the quick facts book, right? So we're doing a topic from the quick facts book. I don't go in order. I just kind of pick a topic and we just discuss it. When you are in the V2, you're actually going to get an entirely different set of lectures that actually go together. They're not random. They build upon each other. So I encourage everyone, especially if you are not if you're not seriously studying for the NCLEX in a guided way and you need a review, you're just doing questions, you're not really accountable, it's taking you a long time to get your nursing license because you don't have consistency, do V2, do V2, which is my full program. So on today, we are going to be talking about a topic from Quick Facts. And I want to look at, what I want to look at is lung sounds, lung sounds. And so lung sounds does come from the Quick Facts book and it's on page 50, all right? But yeah, as well, I am so, 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 and I can't wait to talk about it. I'll talk more about the class in Orlando in a little bit for Monday Motivation, but wherever you are, you can always tap in, you can always tap into the course of studying that we're doing together here. Hi, I'm from Portugal. Love your program. Thank you for Monday and Wednesdays. Oh, amazing. Thank you for being here. Nice to meet you in person yesterday. It was beautiful. So lung sounds, let's get into it. In the Quick Facts book here, I go into specific detail about the assessment findings for lung sounds, which you absolutely have to know, as well as, of course, the clinical priorities box. I want you to read these and, and if you have the older version of the Quick Facts book, please upgrade to Next Gen Study Guide because the clinical priorities are new to this edition and the pharmacology has been updated. So that's what you need to do. Hi, Anne. I see you. Anne says, I want to share my testimony. Okay, we'll see if you can get you on the show today to share your testimony. Hi, Nigeria. Happy to be here. I'm, I'm saying that you're representing all of Nigeria. So hi, Abba. How are you? Okay. So lung sounds, when we talk about lung sounds, we are again coming from a small portion of my full program that I encourage you all to study in. This is page 50 on Quick Facts for NCLEX Next Gen Guide. All right, if you are in nursing school and you don't have Quick Facts for NCLEX, I gave um, some of these away at the convention and then some other people purchased Quick Facts for Nursing School at my Orlando review. It is more comprehensive in terms of med surgeon pharmacology, which is what you need to know for your specific mm, nursing exams. Did you leave copies for the Kenyan nurses? I did. So Kenyan nurse, if you reach out to them, they will have my quick facts book in Kenya, and then they will have the B2 student workbook as well. All right. That is how. I see your questions, and I'm going to do a question and answer section in the back of this uh, show. So I will reserve all those questions for you then. I do see that I have a Remar nurse on. Hi. Hey, you're good. How are you? I'm doing good, but I can't hear you. Is your microphone turned off? Or are you connected to that car? I want to be able to hear you. It's Henry. Nurse Henry. And I love when I pop on and I see Remar nurses that are coming on and they just they're just here to tell me some really good news. All right. Can you hear me, Henry? Yes, can you hear me now? 
No, I cannot hear you now. I just hear Libby moving. Oh, you said you can hear him? Wait a minute. I can hear you. Can you hear Henry? Ah, say something else, Henry. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I can right. hear you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's good to see you, man. It's good to see you, too. It sounds like you have your air condition on. Do you have your air condition on? Yes, yes. I just stepped outside. I was at work. I just stepped outside to my in my car just to, you know, talk to you. Pop, pop on. Okay, okay. So I, I won't keep you quickly. Uh, I won't keep you long. So tell me where you at, where you're from. What's your good news? Well, I'm, um, I'm Nigerian. I'm, I live in the United States. I've been here since 2017. And um, okay. I have uh, been trying to, you know, verify my licensure and, you know, documentation for a while now. And I just did a couple of years ago and uh, I took the act like first time 2022. I didn't pass the exam. But I didn't give up. So I just continued, you know, I was let down a little bit, but I picked myself up and I said, okay, let me see what material I can. I stumbled upon your page on Facebook and I, I checked it up on Instagram. I see everything and I ordered for the book and I started studying since October last year, mm -hmm. you know, just like it was in the book. I studied, followed up with the hours of the calendar and the beginning of the pages and, uh, I didn't even study much. It was about three hours a day, two yeah. hours sometimes a day, and I'm done. I just go by the page. I could like to do like five pages or ten pages, you know, just going slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And I finished the books, and I started again. I started all over again. Okay. So, so I had to go twice on it. So, <laughs> so after that, I said, good. But sometimes when I answer some, you know, past questions, I'll be like, oh, man. It looks like I don't know anything, but I'll, I'll tell myself, like, Henry, you can't know everything. And Regina will tell you, it's okay not to know everything. Yeah. Just go. Go for it. I said, all right. I picked everything up. I picked my confidence up, and I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, and I sat down 141 questions for five hours. Yes, 141 questions for five hours. Up until the last second, I had two breaks. I took my breaks. Yeah. I drank some water, just came back, and I picked up from where I stopped, and I kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, up until time was up. Like, yeah. time yeah. up. I was like, time up. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's on. Yeah. I was so filled with anxiety, but I said, I just pray, like, whatever the case may be, man. Yeah. But I was really confident in answering the question. You know when you answer some questions like, you know, yes, you you know what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I was I was like that when I was I was I was answering the I was answering the questions and I was so excited. I checked on the first of April. I saw my goodness. I just passed my thank you. Oh. Oh. I just passed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How how good did that feel That's after good. struggling with the paperwork and the waiting and all of that stuff? Now that now to finally have it all over. You you, you can't imagine how I feel. I, <laughs> I, I I'm filled with excitement. I'm filled with joy. Like I'm my head my head is just puffy. Like I, I don't really know how to explain that. It's been it's been I've been waiting for this for a long time. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. And you know what I love? I love that you, I love that you were able to go the whole five hours. And that's because during your study process, you're like, I took my time. I wasn't going to let anything rush me. And I, <laughs> and that is the kind of mentality you need to have. Because if you go into the NCLEX and you're not confident and knowing that you could just do the test like you have to be able to be confident to just sit there and say i'm here i'm here i, I was all for it man i was the last candidate to leave the the exam center the president because i was all into the exam like whatever is gonna happen well let's keep going <laughs> so let's, let's keep going <laughs> yes let's keep going i love that 
Oh, I love that. Thank you yeah. so much oh, for coming was. on. Now, listen, I want you to say something to um, I want you to say something to a foreign nurse that's watching right now. Yes. And they're, and they're, they're deciding if they want to even do it, if they want to send in the paperwork, if they want, is it worth it? Is it even worth it? Don't stop. Don't stop. Whatever comes in your way, just tackle it heads on. Whoever is standing, maybe getting your paperwork delayed, just be patient with them. Have faith. Pray. Talk to God. Yeah. Tell him your, your heart desire. He will yeah. surely answer you. Because we are doing this for the greater good. And I believe when you say something to God and it's for the greater good, he will surely answer you. No matter how long. But he will at the end of the day. Don't give up. Have that faith. And you have to put in effort. That is very, very important. Very, very important. You have to put in that effort. Just give yourself a timeline. You want to do this and you want to achieve this. I wrote, I had a board in my house where I wrote, I need to pass the entry. That's my goal. That's the only goal I have in mind is to pass the entry. Point blank, period. I don't, whatever, however, that's the ultimate goal. And once I started to study, I opened my mind up, soak all the information, you know, make sure that I can regurgitate them when time comes. And yeah, I love that. Really what, what, made you, what made you want to come back here and give a testimony? Because I have tried other, I have tried other, you know, materials, you know, and I compared how I understood compared to how I understood your material. If I, if I wanted to understand the same topic, it was a little bit difficult for me when I look at other what other people on, on YouTube or Facebook or somewhere. But yours was pam pam pam. It was just straight to the point. Yeah. And you didn't cut corners, you just it was just as it was as, as, it, as it is. I, I when I when I finished, look at this. I have to make this um flashcard out of your okay. book. It's good very, for you. very important. This is very, very important. You use all these flashcards. I had I had a hundred of them like that bowed up somewhere where I just read this information very it comes very handy like that. Yes. I just read them this is burns. This is, I just write them out like that. Different topics. Neutropenic precautions. Good for you. Like celiac disease. I just write about it like that. Yeah. You know the signs and symptoms, the medicine, everything, yes. the side effect. You know, it's very easy for me when I just pick it up, bam, bam. I'm studying anyway. I could be yeah. You you make flashcards like quick facts, so I did yeah, it. Right, I did it right. too. <laughs> flashcards, like. flashcards like quick facts. Okay, yeah. I I love it. I appreciate um I appreciate you taking your time to be be Monday motivation today. All right, thank you for having me, man. Thank you, appreciate. It. Absolutely, all the best. What's next for you? What are you going to be doing now? Yeah, so I'm just I'm talking to recruiters right now. They've been blowing my phone up. My email has been lighting up. Yes. So, <laughs> I'm hoping to, you know, get uh, a job close by, maybe New York mm -hmm. or somewhere because I'm in the state of Maryland, so I don't want to be so far away. I yeah. see. I see. Yeah. Well, all the best to you. I'm so happy Thank for you. you. Congratulations. So Thank you so much. You did it. You did yeah. it. You yeah. did it. Yes. You're a licensed nurse. So now um you can go anywhere you could do anything you could transfer that license come down to florida go to california yeah. go to wherever wherever yes. Yes. the world is open to you thank you so much for your product i'll recommend it to anybody trying to take the NCLEX exam just go for it sit down study hard if you don't if you don't feel confident study study over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. it will kill you just keep studying if you exactly. think you know it, just keep studying until the day comes. Because definitely the day will come and you would need all that information at your fingertips. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Have a good one. Okay. I love it. I love when we just open up. We just open up the live and we have 
Testimonies. This is Monday Motivation. Congratulations to Nurse Henry. He did V2. He did the V2, y'all. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? This program, literally, I made it for students who did not have success, like me, honestly, did not have success in nursing school to the point where you left understanding the things you need to understand. You know how you can learn something but not understand it? And that's how a lot of us get through nursing school. We know just enough to pass the test, but we're not competent enough to, um, to sit through a five-hour NCLEX. We're just not there. And that's okay. But you do have the responsibility of making sure that you are there. What I loved about Henry, he said, I just studied I, I had, and, and this is a this is a really key point that you might have missed it. He failed in Clex the first time. He failed, but he didn't consider himself a failure. Oh my goodness. This is this is it right here. I'm getting into Monday motivation. He failed the exam, but he didn't let that become his permanent status. And I talk to many people who fail the NCLEX and that becomes their identity to the point where they're afraid to try again. And so if you are going to have success in something, you have to be willing to fail and fail not once, but fail twice, fail three times if you need to in order to get that goal. When we we watch Olympic players that get the gold medal in some sport, they don't get the gold medal their first time. They were once in fifth place. They were once in third place. And then they tried again and they got to first place. A lot of people like to stay in the position of failure. All right, well, this, okay. This is not, this is not the motivation yet. This is not the motivation. We gotta get to the education. We will get there. But Henry gave us a word. He gave us a word today. And so I'm encouraging you, if you don't have my program, it's not easy. It's not easy to go it alone. I'm, I'm here to be your uh, guide. Hello, I would like to say thank you for your product. After 13 years, I have passed. I am truly grateful. Amazing. Thank you for never giving up on yourself. Come on into the live and join the program. I'd love to hear from you if possible. We are indeed live today. I'm talking about the V2. I'm talking about how you should get into it. Right now, we do have the option for you to su select your subscription. Will it be, look, will it be the one month, the three month or the six month subscription? We have it all if you're in nursing school or if you're just starting. Okay. We're going to get into this lung sounds as well. As we are thinking about this content, these are the things that you have to master. So lung sounds, what I like about lung sounds is that there are many that you could be asked about, but there are only certain ones that are important for NCLEX. So I listed those ones in the Quick Fox book. But when you are listening to a patient's lung sounds, remember, you're going to have different sounds based on the location that you're listening to. And some sounds are going to be normal and abnormal. So we're going to focus on the abnormal sounds on today. Let me get back into it. So lung sounds can be classified as their pitch, intensity, duration, and quality. Oh, I like that. I like how many people are saying, hey, I'm back. I'm back in it again. I've been revitalized by Orlando, and now I'm coming back to study. Amen. Amen. All right. So lung sounds. Now, lung sounds are important, and you'll see this when I do the, the, the questions at the end. I'm going to get to these questions in just a little bit. They can aid in when you know the lung sounds and you can identify, you can identify how to get the proper treatment, ongoing observation, and even know the respiratory condition of your patient, which will lead to better outcomes. Now, any normal sound is going to be a vesicular sound or a bronchial sound or a tracheal sound. It is your responsibility as a nurse to know these locations. These are anatomy terms. So if I say vesicular, somebody put that on the screen, what is vesicular referring, referring to? What is bronchial referring to? What is the tracheal sounds referring to? 
Okay, those are all normal. The abnormal sounds are our adventitious sounds, right? We learned that in nursing school, that term adventitious. Hello, hello, come on in, we are starting. So the normal lung sounds, you have vesicular, you have bronchovesicular, you have tra uh, bronchio and tracheo. So the pitch intensity and duration are here. So that means the pitch, is it high? Is it medium? Is it low? The intensity, can you hear it? Do you need to have, do you need to have a stethoscope to hear it? Can you hear without a stethoscope? And then the duration is uh, how and when this sound occurs, how and when this sound occurs. So the vesicular sounds, okay, the vesicular sounds are a low pitch sound. They have a very soft intensity and the duration is mm, inspiration, inspiration, okay? So that means you hear it when a patient is breathing when, in, 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 in. The bronchovesicular sounds is a medium pitched. The intensity is intermediate. The duration is you can have it equally inspiration and expiration. Bronchial sounds are loud. Tracheal sounds can be loud. And when you think about when you think about what makes a lung sound louder or softer, the whole thing is what? A, a lung sound will be louder if you hear more what? If you can hear more air passing through. So in areas where air passes through, the lung sound is expected to be louder, okay? Um, yes, this is for LPNs, this is for RNs. Each, um, each discipline should have an understanding of, of this material, okay? So we, we are looking at, we're looking at lung sounds and we're seeing that bronchio and trachea, think about the trachea, think about the trachea up here, you get a lot of airway passage through here because you get an air from your nose, air from your mouth. And so you can hear it. You can hear it very loudly in these locations. So very loud. Bronchial sounds are heard on expiration. Tracheal sounds are heard on inspiration. Uh, which breath sounds may be both normal and abnormal. Mm, out of the four, which breath sounds may be normal and abnormal? And the answer is the bronchial lung sounds, bronchial lung sounds. And so like I said here, these are the lung sound factors where there is areas of airway movement, also your airway structures, the turbulence, the alveolar movement and the respiratory muscles, the respiratory muscles as well. Now I'm going to challenge you all today with our, I have not done this in a while, so let's warm up to it. Let's get ready for it. The like challenge on YouTube. I want us to get to our fifth bonus question. In order to do that, we have to smash that like button. So if you're watching on YouTube, um, I have 600 people watching on YouTube, literally the biggest study group on the planet right now. Nowhere on this planet are there 600 nursing students studying for NCLEX, really 700 if we add in YouTube, nowhere. So if that's how many people came yesterday, <laughs> that's how many people we had in the class yesterday in the city of Orlando Shout out to y'all who came to Orlando. The parking was terrible. The parking was terrible. So I love how you did not let that stop you yesterday. So anyways, we have over 600 people studying, but we only have 200 likes and that just won't do. So if we're going to unlock this bonus question, I need y'all to sign into Facebook, uh, sign into YouTube. Yeah, you sign up to YouTube and let's get the likes up to 400. Ready, set, go. We're at 204. All right. So um, yes, 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 yes. We had a great class indeed. So we're talking about lung factors. So we did airway movement, airway structures, turbulence, 
alveolar movement and the use of respiratory muscles, the use of respiratory muscles. Now, the adventitious lung sounds, these are the ones that you do need to be aware of and what can be causing them. Ah, and what can be causing them. And so we have here crackles. Crackles, crackles, crackles. Cannot stress this as the primary. Mm, cannot stress this as the primary um, one to know. If you don't know any adventitious lung sounds, crackles is what you need to know. <laughs> okay. And you can have fine crackles or coarse crackles. But the whole idea is that crackles are going to be indicative of a um, a fluid. Okay. Crackles are going to be indicative of fluid. And I was just, I wanted to look in the I wanted to look in my quick facts book. Oh, this is the class behind me. Shout out to this class. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So if we're reading, yes, if we are reading in the quick facts, it says, um, what is the cause of crackles? The cause of crackles are fluid or secretions in the airway. Now, when would a nurse hear crackles? On inspiration. What are some possible causes of crackles? Well, we have pneumonia, edema, and bronchitis, where we're going to have fluid, fluid, fluid. So this is one of the, the most important ones to know. I start my lung sounds with this. Mm -mm -mm. All right. I start my lung sounds with this in quick facts. I love this testimonial here. It says, my boyfriend had crackles last night. He have a lot of fluid around his lungs and he was diagnosed with pneumonia an hour ago. So thank you for sharing that. This is real life, um, real life verification of the things that we need to study in on NCLEX. All right. Because it's happening all the time. So anyways, crackles fluid in the airway. A friction rub, a friction rub is going to be grating sound mostly heard during inspiration. This can be from pleural effusion or a pneumothorax, a pneumothorax, pleural effusion, or a pneumothorax. And everybody should know exactly what a pneumothorax, attention pneumothorax is. Shout out on you guys working together for the likes. We are up to 287 likes, so we're getting there. So we got crackles, we got friction rub, it's a grating sound. Also, we have ronchi. Ronchi is a continuous deep, low pitch sound with rumblings or gurgles. And this also indicates secretions in the large airways as well. I don't see too many um, too many questions with ronchi specifically. It's mostly going to be crackles. Strider. Strider is a sound that you need to know. It is caused by a laryngeal, quick fact says laryngeal spasms, swelling, croup, and epiglottitis as well. So Strider is a noisy breathing, mostly heard on inspiration, and it indicates a large obstruction in the trachea or larynx. It also can indicate a, a choking hazard or presence of a foreign body. Wheezing. Wheezing indicates narrowed or partially obstructed airway. So it is a musical high-pitched hissing sound, a hissing quality, and it's mostly heard on expiration. Sometimes Strider is confused with wheezing. In quick facts here, I say, in which age group is Strider often seen, most often seen? And that is going to be in children, in children. Okay, so... I have here um, just some nursing priorities, nursing actions that are very good. So as before we get into our NCLEX questions, we have to understand what our nursing priorities are going to be when it comes to breath sounds. Good job. Yes, Ruth, mostly seen in children. Did I meet you yesterday, Ruth? Are you the Ruth that I met yesterday? The um, Okay, so Strider, the nursing priority is, of course, if Strider if a toddler comes in, NCLEX says a toddler has come in 
and the nurse is the no the okay so the mother brings a toddler in okay check this out mother brings the toddler in and tells the nurse that the toddler is not themselves or they're complaining of pain and the pain is generalized okay happens and the nurse assesses the toddler and she hears Strider. She hears Strider, perfect NCLEX scenario. Now, the untrained new nurse is going to say um, uh, that the patient may need um, Tylenol or pain medicine or check for infection, right? But you will know that if a mother brings a toddler in and the toddler reports general pain because toddlers cannot, they cannot point to where their pain is. You don't have a great, this is why I don't work in pediatrics. They are not great with health histories or their own assessments. So it, you have to really know your stuff in order to be a pediatric nurse. Please do not go into pediatrics if you're not strong in your assessment. So the nurse, the Remar nurse is going to know for NCLEX, Strider is going to be consistent with a foreign body. And so we need to have a CT for the investigation of a choking hazard, okay? Some sort of choking hazard, some sort of, uh, they swallow something they had no business swallowing, all right? All right, Wheezing, wheezing. So wheezing, we understand wheezing can be airway obstruction. It's most likely airway obstruction. However, wheezing is not necessarily related to a foreign object or a choking hazard. Wheezing mostly comes with what condition? Specifically for NCLEX, but maybe in real life too. There you go. Yes, if you have a patient who is wheezing, Eight times out of 10 for NCLEX, the scenario is going to be asthma. It's going to be asthma, okay? And so what is our priority medication when it comes to wheezing for an asthma attack? Let me give you the options. Are we going to give, um, are we going to give a corticosteroid? Are we going to give oxygen or are we going to give a, let me give you those two, those two. If you have a choice to give a cortical steroid or oxygen for asthma, which one is your priority? There's those two, either the steroid or oxygen, which one are you going to give? And those are the only two. Either you say cortical steroid or you say oxygen. You don't have a choice of any other medication. What are you gonna give? And this is very important because I have I, I asked this question in the NCLEX review, and there was a big discussion about it. A big discussion about it. So is it oxygen or steroids? And I even see here in the comments, some people are putting steroids, some people are putting oxygen. So the correct answer is going to be the steroid. Yes, the correct answer is going to be the steroid in this situation. And what I love about this, and I love about this NCLEX question, is that many times if you are not strong in your content, you will automatically think oxygen is always the priority. Oxygen in many cases is not the priority. In many cases, that's not the priority. Why? Why? Because when we are nurses, we are trying to address the cause of something. We are trying to know and address the cause of something. And so if you know asthma and you know wheezing, then you understand that what is causing, what is causing the wheeze? Okay. The wheeze is the result of what? Airway constriction. Okay. Airway constriction. What is constricting the airway? 
Oh, I love it. And this is why I love, this is why I love studying with my Remar nurses. What's causing the constriction is inflammation. There has been some sort of allergen. There's been some sort of trigger that has actually produced inflammation. So in order for us to help this patient, oxygen is not going to do it. We can give the patient oxygen all day long, okay? But oxygen does not decrease inflammation. It doesn't, but a steroid will, a steroid will. And so that's why I put this on here as a stopping point, because sometimes I think we can sit through nursing classes and we can catch on to the, we can catch on to the large things that the teacher is saying over and over again, but those fine details we can, we can miss and this one can save somebody's life. And that's what NCLEX is looking for. Can you save a life? So a uh, reason the medication is going to be the steroid. Uh-huh. Crackles, we need to determine the cause of crackles. There's always a reason why your patient would have crackles. And there can be many reasons, as we stated before. The friction rub. Ah, so the friction rub sounds exactly like what it is. This is another instance where you have inflamed surfaces that are rubbing together. So for NCLEX, for NCLEX, there are two friction rubs that you can hear, okay? You can hear the, write this down if you don't know this one. This is something that you need to write down because it's very important. For NCLEX, there are two friction rubs that you can hear. One is the pleural friction, friction rub, and the other is the pericardial friction rub. There are two. So the pleural friction rub and the pericardial friction rub, they're not the same. They're not the same. Let me, let me put this on the screen here. So I asked the question. This is the question I asked, and this is just me studying. This is why I never say do 100 questions a day. Because if you are really looking at the content, then you have enough to do here. You really do. And you're learning more by going over this content than doing a lot of questions. Because when I came to Friction Rub, I found, hey, there are two Friction Rubs that you have to know for nursing, that you have to know for NCLEX as well the pleural friction rub and the pericardial friction rub, what is the difference? And they're here right on the um, screen. But somebody type it, um, Eunice is asking on YouTube for somebody to put these two types of friction rubs, the pleural and the pericardial. And just by the name tells us one of the differences. So if we're talking about a pleural friction rub, where's that going to be located? The inflamed surfaces are going to be the lungs. Ah, yes, absolutely. So the pleural friction rub talks about the inflamed surfaces rubbing together. Okay, it's like a rub. <laughs> you actually can hear it. All right, the lung surfaces, they're inflamed. The pericardial friction rub, mm -hmm. pericardial friction rub is um, also, um, can you give me that? I know this is like, Mark is here and I need, I need a teaching tool um, so that you don't forget this. Mm, this, that plastic bag over there. Or even that wag right there. Okay, so the um, the pl the pleural friction rub is around the lungs. the The pericardial friction rub, <laughs> the pericardial friction rub is the heart. Right now, the thing about a pericard, and I'm a cardiology nurse um, by by Trey. I love it. This is my whole my whole deal is cardiology. The pericardial friction rub is something that can be heard even without a stethoscope. That's one of the big differences. And it sounds like more like this. 
Can you hear that? Maybe this one's better. Like you can hear a pericardial friction rub without a stethoscope. And it sounds almost like, like it sounds like a crunching sound, like snow. You know how you walk on snow in the morning and it's just like, for those of you in not maybe in Florida, Nigeria, y'all never heard of snow before. Like y'all heard of it, but y'all never heard it. In Ohio, we know what it sounds like early in the morning to walk on snow, okay? So this is pericardial friction rub. You don't, It's. I mean, it's not even like Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies are like pops. They like pop. That's crackles. Pericardial friction rub, literally because the surface of your heart is inflamed, it's like one good, like one good sound, one good sound, one good sound, okay? And you actually will have three, three friction, three, three pericardial friction rubs. You will hear them with each beat of the heart. It's like, mm. so it's very loud like that, right? Okay. So you live in Florida, but you were raised in NYC, you know snow. All right. So anyways, that's the difference. The plural friction rub, you need a stethoscope to hear it. You're going to hear it on ins inspiration and expiration. Because the pericardial friction rub has nothing to do with breathing and it's the heart, you will hear it without a stethoscope. And it doesn't matter if the patient is inspirating or expirating. These are the little differences that will make you stand apart from a nurse who is not prepared for NCLEX. These little things, all right? It's like rubbing hair. I don't know. Does your hair sound crunchy? Maybe like mousse in it, something like that. Yes, it's a wanchy, wanchy sound. I love it. <laughs> I love it when you got, you're teaching like walking on fall leaves. All right, what else? What else? What else? What else? No snow in California. No. Uh, but you get the idea. You get the idea. Next time it snows in Ohio, I'll take everybody outside and we'll just walk around in the snow. All right. So um, I wanted to go to now the bronchial lung sounds assessed by egophony, whispered by, oh my goodness, pe oh, pectiloquy. Pec what, how, do you, how do you say it? Pectiloquy. Oh, that's the one where you have the patient whisper right? You have the patient whisper. And ideally, if you hear the sound getting firmer, then there may be a mass there. Um, or the sound may be louder when the patient whispers. So those are all assessment points. Makes me miss nursing school. Wrong guy, we have the patient cough to try to clear their lungs and then see if we hear that again. Sometimes, oh no, let me not get into it. I can't, I can't give too much because we have questions coming up. Okay, so normal geriatric respiratory findings. This is very important because we know that as a patient ages, as a patient ages, there are changes in the respiratory system that we may say would be abnormal for a younger person, but as a geriatric patient, this is fine this is fine. We're not going to call the doctor if our 73-year-old patient, here we go. The first one is decreased ability to hold breath during an examination. That's normal. Okay. That's normal. Decreased chest wall expansion and use of respiratory muscles. That is also normal for the geriatric patient. Increased Use of accessory muscles secondary to calcification of rib articulations. Lots of fancy words here, but I do expect you to be able to speak our language in nursing. And so accessory muscles, secondary calcification and articulations are medical terms, okay? How do you get into the V2? Super easy. Go to my website, remarnurse.com, remarnurse.com, and pick whether you are a registered nurse or a practical nurse. Those are the those are the two programs that I have. Okay, the last one is sometimes the presence of basilar crackles in the absence of disease. Let's stop right here for a second. And I need somebody to tell me, I highlighted the word, you hear this doctor say this all the time. 
They say this to nurses. The patient has basilar or bacillar crackles. What is basilar? What does that mean if you see it? If you read it in a book, are you going to stop and just gloss over it? Or are you going to stop and you're going to look it up? <laughs> I love it. I miss you, Remar. Come back to Kenya. I miss, I miss Kenya. I do. I miss Kenya so much. It's a great country to be in. Great. And I realized that I'm so cold now because everywhere has AC back here. Now that I'm back in the States, we have AC in our cars. We get out of our cars, AC in the grocery stores, AC in the classrooms. I was literally shaking in the classroom because I got so used to just no AC. No AC. We just, we're just out here in Kenya, 90 degrees, no problem. <laughs> Okay, basilar, yes, very good. Basilar at the base, at the base of the lungs. So patients will have this as they get older. They'll have basilar changes and it can be normal. So allow them to cough and then reevaluate the patient. Okay, um, let me see if we made our share goals yet because I think we're going into questions now. And I gave you the challenge of 400. So did we make it? Let's see where we are. 700 are watching. We have 300. You'll be happy to know we do have 343 likes. So we only need a few more as we unlock the bonus question. It's time for our NCLEX questions. It's time for the NCLEX questions. And they are going to be on lung sounds. I'm expecting you to get three Three right, okay? Two may be a little tricky, but let's get into it. Here's our first question. A new registered nurse is assessing a 40-year-old man for an annual physical exam. To hear lung sounds properly, the nurse must instruct the client to, number one, do pursed lip breathing, two, do deep breathing, Three, breathe quietly in one minute. Or four, lean forward and breathe. Oh, this is so good. This is our assessment. What do we know about assessments in nursing? What are we going to ask our patient to do? Okay. A new registered nurse is assessing a 40-year-old man for an annual physical exam to hear lung sounds. Okay, it looks like we are all on one, one court. And when that happens, I don't hold y'all. Two is right. Two has it. Okay, two has it. And so do deep breathing. Absolutely. Doing deep breathing is the way to go. To chest auscultate, the nurse must listen to the intensity or loudness of the breath sounds. Okay, so normally there is a fourfold increase in the loudness of breath sounds when a client takes a maximal deep breath. So the deep breathing allows you to hear, hear the breath sounds more clearly, okay? And so this is why that is better than quiet breathing, quiet breathing. I'm gonna move on. Most of you got that one right. Here's question number two. Mm, okay, the nurse received a client reporting difficulty breathing. The client has chronic pulmonary obstructive disease, COPD, to monitor disease progression, which of the following findings is expected? Ah, and I got my MV2. There is my, um, there is my respiratory, okay, lecture. Uh, so is it number one, adventitious lung sounds, two, crackles, three, vesicular lung sounds, and or four, wheezing, what are, what are we going to be expecting? Talking about COPD, COPD here. That's okay. We got, just got home from work. Tap in. It's okay. You can definitely watch the replay, but tap in live right now. We're talking about patients with COPD. I see the answers are two. So you can only go with one. Only one is right. So are we going to mostly see two or four, because this, this, I see people are saying two, people are saying, are we expecting two for crackles or are we expecting 
four for wheezing. Remember, for next gen NCLEX, we have to give you the answer in the question stem. Okay. Mm, right. So what are we going to be thinking here? The correct answer, if you have these two as an option, you want to go with four, wheezing. Okay. Four. Wheezes or high-pitched musical sounds are typically heard on expiration and may indicate airway obstruction as seen in COPD due to bronchioconstriction and airway inflammation. So this is most likely going to be heard in a patient with COPD. Okay. It's going to be the wheezing. Did you get that one right? All right. And even if you did, just remember for your NCLEX exam, if you have to pick the two, go with the obstructive sound. Go with the obstructive sound. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, mm, okay. A client was admitted due to pneumonia and is presenting shortness of breath. During chest auscultation, the nurse hears discontinuous high-pitched sounds upon client's inspiration. The nurse should document this finding as, number one, friction rub, two, strider, three, crackles, four, wheezing. This is a really good one because what? The answer is right there. The answer is right there. And we talked about this actually in class today. So I'm expecting everybody to get this one right. You guys are good. You guys are good today. And some of you that are um, getting these ones not right, it's not that you, it's just not that we just have to go over it again. That's all. Just have to go over it again. That's it. This is studying. Okay. Lost my dad four days ago. Oh my goodness. Thank you for, um, Lena, thank you for, sharing that with us. How are you doing? How are you doing? I see you're coming to class. So are you just, you know, pushing through? Are you just trying to have a routine? Let me know. Okay. The correct answer here is going to be three crackles, right? So no matter how fancy of a word that you could say, um, you know, discontinuous non-musical sounds heard during inspiration because you know the patient has pneumonia and shortness of breath. We know the causes of pneumonia, shortness of breath are going to be more fluid based. So we should expect that patient to have the crackles, have the crackles. Okay. Question number four is this question number four is this. Oh, let me see. Hold on one second. I got I to gotta check our, I got to check our share goals to see if we're doing the, um, we're doing the fifth question or not. This may be our final question. I don't know. Let me check it real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to YouTube and let's see how many we have. 385. Okay. So we're 15 short of the unlocking the bonus question. 15 short of the unlocking the bonus question. So this may be our last question. I don't know. Unless 15 of you guys hurry up and hit the smash button. The smash, goal, but the smash goal was to get to 400 and we only have three. Now we have 386. So here is the question. What did you say, Mark? Smash the like button. Sorry. I'm still, I'm, I'm getting there. All right, here we go. Fourth question is this. A new nurse is caring for a, a patient who presents with lung sounds she has never heard before during assessment. Okay. What should be the nursing priority? Okay, so here we go. A new nurse is caring for a patient who presents with lung sounds she has never heard before during the assessment. What should be the nursing priority? Okay, number one, ask the charge nurse to listen to the client's lung sound. Two, apply oxygen on the client immediately. Three, ask the client to cough and deep breathe, or four, assess the respiratory status. 
So we have here, I love this question. I wrote it in like two seconds. A new nurse is caring for a patient who presents with lung sounds she has never heard before. What should be the nursing priority? Number one, ask the charge nurse to listen to the client's lung sounds. Two, apply oxygen on the client immediately. Three, ask the client to cough and deep breathe. Four, assess the respiratory status. <laughs> you can't put two answers. You have to pick one. Which one is the best one? Love it. Okay, I'm giving you an opportunity and I'm being so quiet because this indeed is a safety question. Mm. We were like, ah. Yeah, we, we made our share goal. So we'll have another one after this for sure. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work here. But on NCLEX, you go into that ring by yourself. You put those gloves on and you go in there by yourself. So when you're in front of this question, what you're going to do? What are you going to do? A lot. I have a lot of ones, I have a lot of threes, and I have a lot of fours. Okay, my dramatic pause is over. I'm, I'm going to just, okay. The correct answer is going to be number four. You know, you know better. You know better. We always follow the nursing process, okay? We always follow the nursing process. And what is so important, what is so important is if you don't have enough information, you what? You assess. Because you have the ability to do that. You have the ability to do that every single time. It's the nursing process that guides you. There is no, there is no situation on the NCLEX where you're going to do something other than the nursing process. That's what the test is built on. Now, in real life, that's where we get into trouble. Because, yeah, in real life, you may be like, ah, oh, Miss Sharon, can you come help me listen to this patient's lungs? Yeah, but no. Because for NCLEX, Miss Sharon could be in the middle of a cold blue. And if your patient is really having problems, you're standing there waiting for Miss Sharon to get finished when you could be continuing to do your own job, right? If your patient is in some sort of situation, you have to do something. So assessing the patient's respiratory status is the correct answer. This involves closely monitoring respiratory rate, depth effort as well as the oxygen <laughs> saturation levels. So this is the, I'm going to write more questions like this. So this was good, right? I love it. Aileen says, I'm here to learn. That's why I show up. That's why I show up. Um, so it, it's all, it is all, it is all. Um, we're talking about a new nurse. We're talking about what we're able to do within our scope of practice. And we are always, always able to assess. Okay. Um, so otherwise your char your nurse in charge will ask you as a patient. To, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I like that. Adriana says, you go and tell the nurse, hey, I need you to listen to the patient's lungs. Number one, they're going to talk about you more than likely. Okay, I'm just really keeping it real with you guys. You all know how nurses get down. And let me just say this. As you are going to be a new nurse, let me just give you this tip. I wrote it in quick uh, first shift. First shift, I wrote this in first shift. The less your coworkers know about you, the better. And I'm just really keeping it honest. Keep it very personal um, in terms of I'm here professionally, but my personal life is my personal life. And also, I would say that the nurses that I've seen, and I was a travel nurse for a couple years, and the nurses that would go in and overshare, oversharing, and sometimes people overshare because they want to fit in. Every nursing unit that you will work in will have a specific culture. That means that there's a certain nurse that is more popular. Um, 
There's a certain lifestyle that is more accepted. There's a group that goes out together socially and you may not fit in that group and that's okay, okay? That's okay for you to do that because ultimately that you're there to do a job. You're there not to be liked. And so when you have the need to overshare, all of that information can ultimately be used against you. Okay, so if you're having problems with your children, if you're having problems with your marriage, if your brother just got out of jail, if you tried marijuana for the first time last weekend, all of these things I have heard on the unit. Okay, and when a nurse does that, thinking that they're going to get support, maybe in the moment they will. Maybe in the moment, the nurse will say, you know what? How brave of you to try marijuana for the first time after 45 years. They might say that, right? Or maybe they say, you know what? That's good that your brother got out of jail. I'm so happy, you know, that he's home now. But as soon as that person leaves, okay, the unit, or they're not around, they, they talk about you. And they say, that's why she was late to work because she's smoking that weed, y'all, okay? <laughs> that's what happens. And so I cannot stress enough, okay? I cannot stress enough that um, you're there as mostly a stepping stone. <laughs> Pray to God about it. Yes, absolutely, Terika. Pray to God about whatever you want to share. Don't take it to work, okay? Um, and so, and so, um, that's my soapbox. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. But you will do better to say less. I tell my daughter this all the time. The person that is talking the most in the room is usually the one that has no idea what's going on. So when you are trying to establish yourself as an authority or a professional, the less people know about your personal lives, the better. All right. All right. Let me go back in here. We did unlock the bonus question. We did unlock the bonus question. And so um, somebody's saying, but how can she, um, how can she continue to assess if she doesn't know? So the question specifically states that the lung sounds is something, the lung sounds is something she has never heard before. All right. So maybe the lung sounds are something she has never heard before, but we can continue to assess the respiratory status, which is the rate, the depth, the effort, and the oxygenation level. Those are things that are possible to evaluate. And that's what we would want that new nurse to still do. Okay, let's do this last one here. Mm, this is a good one as well. It says... The nurse is caring for a client having crackles due to pneumonia. The nurse, the, the client reports weakness and fatigue. Which of the following actions should the nurse prioritize? Let me read it again. So the nurse is caring for a client. They have crackles due to pneumonia. The client is saying they're weak and they're fatigued. Which of the following actions should the nurse prioritize? Number one, nebulizing with salbutamol. Two, administration of oxygen therapy. Three, perform physiotherapy. Four, administer antimicrobials. This was our bonus question that we did unlock today. And this is a great one too. I think this is my second favorite question. Mm hmm. So again, remember, remember, <laughs> we are always looking for, we're looking for the answer in the, in the STEM, but we're always trying to fix the issue. We're always trying to fix the issue. Yeah. Some people are like, I don't know. I got it down to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and you guys know I'm today I'm doing the um I'm doing the mixed uppers. So the correct answer here is we need two four. We need to four. Why do we need to four? Why do we need to four? Because the crackles are due to what? Okay. So I gave you the answer right there. So our, look at, check this out. So what we are focused on is what? The pneumonia. That's what we're focused on. The client is reporting weakness and fatigue. They have an infection, okay? They have an infection. We have to, this is a big principle, treat the problem. Yeah, treat the problem. And so here, the antimicrobials, if I would have put antibiotic, you probably would have got it. But I changed the word and I put antimicrobials. Antimicrobials just mean, um, an antibiotic is like a specific, it is going to target a specific condition. Penicillin, right? Gentamicin, tetracyclines. An antimicrobial is also going to get rid of bacteria, but it's a general class. I just put antimicrobials. But the underlying cause of this is an infection. So we need to give an antimicrobial. You can do oxygen and nebulizers and chest PT and all those things, but they won't get rid of the problem. So that's why the thing about the thing is the problem, all right? Yes, to kill the microorganisms. Very good, everybody, very, very good. I had such a good time with this topic and I don't think I've ever done this topic before actually out of quick facts. I think this is the first time I've ever done lung sounds, but these questions were rocking today. And they were really, really good. So I saw somebody say, please do more lung sounds. Yeah, I think I will. We had a great time. Okay, so now the second part of our episode, and we've already been going over an hour. So shh, let me get to this quickly. This is very, very powerful. This is something that I have come to realize. The Orlando class solidified it for me yesterday. And if you didn't come to the class, I do want to share this with you. It is the topic of this faith that can move mountains. What do you think this means? Faith that can move mountains. And I am going to be joined. This is a really important one. Okay. This is a really important one because I am going to be joined by my favorite guest host, by my favorite guest host mm, 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 on this topic. And I'm here with Pastor Mark, Chaplain Mark, Elder Mark. Husband Mark. Husband Mark. <laughs> All right. Um, and so faith that can move mountains. Something happened yesterday in the class that we have never done before in the Orlando class. And I'm in the back. Marcus, let me just set the picture for you. We have hundreds of nursing students in a building. That's number one. And I'm in the back hearing Mark do the uh, the introductions and talk about the company. And normally I'm really nervous because I'm shy and I, I'm not, a, I'm shy, I'm shy. Whether you believe it or not, I'm very shy. And I get, I get nervous when I'm speaking in front of people. So anyways, I'm, I'm not nervous this time. I am filled with a heaviness. I'm filled with a heaviness that I cannot shake. And it's like I weigh, it's like I'm walking, but I weigh like 600 pounds. Like every step that I take, I feel like I, I weigh like literally 600 pounds. <clears throat> and I'm like, God, what is this? Why am I feeling like this? And the Lord speaks to me and he said, in that room, there is a burden of pain. There is a burden of hurt. There is a burden. There is a heaviness that you need to acknowledge and understand before you walk out there. And so the physical heaviness that I was feeling was a, a lesson for me to understand what the nursing students were actually 
um, experiencing in real time. So I did not go out there. So I did not just go out there like, hey, how you doing? Everything is all good. But I went out there in the proper understanding of who I was speaking to. And so for the very first time ever, okay, for the very first time ever, I said we could not do the class until we had um, a, a special prayer to be prayed over the audience. And I said that on faith because I did not know how people were going to respond. So I called Mark back up on the stage and he prayed in an awesome prayer, a really awesome prayer. Literally so many people were in tears. And afterwards, I was told that there were people who were dealing with, mm, I was told that there are people who were dealing with massive amounts of pain in that audience. Mm -hmm. People who had cancer that were there, people who were going through, you know, real time abusive relationships, people that were going through um, divorce, children incarcerated, pain, 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 pain. Yeah. One of the, um, the nurses that I spoke with uh, during our intermission, she was on the phone and you could see a lot of heaviness uh -huh. and she took the time from her phone call because uh, i walked near nearby her and she said that her father had passed away that morning that morning that, that morning the morning of the review her father had passed away Tell me. and that she felt in her spirit that it was right for her to be there just to receive encouragement Wow. Wow. And so, and so in that class, in that class, in the, <clears throat> the mission of Remar, it was like, you know, we do education and we do ministry. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, in that Orlando class, for the first time, the priority was ministry ministry first. first ministry first you literally have somebody who showed up to the class the With day that their dad died mm -hmm. now you know most of us <laughs> you know most of us if we lose a parent we're not coming to class but the holy spin the holy spirit sent her to that class for what for what? For what she said, encouragement. Mm -hmm. Encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My goodness. And what I'm what I realize um now is that we live in a in a broken world. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um we live in a in a in a spiritually deprived environment general yeah usually just, mm -hmm. just being here on planet earth uh being here in the united states our struggles um you know go beyond daily activities and we're really confronted with a, a, a lack of spiritual depth and a lack of spiritual enrichment Yes. From the things, from the environment in which we, in which we live in. Yes, that's so true. And, and, and this is what I come to know from our travels. Mm -hmm. And this is what I said in the class. Everybody in each country, there was a different burden. Yeah. Right. So when we were in the Philippines, um, the nurses there had the pathway, like the, the nurses there, they had the pathway to come to the U S it was something that they were supported with doing they, they wanted to do it. They understood they had the education, um, but their struggle was access, right? Their struggle was access in terms of how can I get it? Who has it for me? What, what is the decision that I should make? Yeah. Right. And then also, how do you have access without being taken advantage of? Yes, that's true. Yes. That was the Philippines. Yeah. And 
in Kenya, the nurses absolutely had the knowledge. One of the, the knowledge of nursing, the knowledge of nursing, yeah. the, the educational level and execution in Kenya is, 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 is top, it's like top tier. top tier. Those nurses in those classes knew exactly what I was talking about. They had a depth that I had not seen in a long time. Um, but their burden was access. Their burden was um, the knowledge of how to do it. That they could actually, actually do, it, do it. Even actually, they could even do it. Yeah. So access again, yeah. whether it's, there, you know, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did not have as much, even as um, I would say the nurses in the Philippines in terms of the even terms of material things right there were some things that they, they just didn't have mm -hmm. right we come back to the united states okay um where essentially we have everything we have everything we have all of the resources we have the education we have the support we have the technology we have the choices okay yeah folks showed up in cars Every, everybody showed up, had cars. <laughs> like, we had air condition inside, outside, mm -hmm. everything. Nice carpet. Carpet, air, carpet, nice chairs. Chandeliers. Chandel <laughs> chandeliers in the doggone room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The burden here in the United States is internal. We are, even though we have it all, listen to this, even though we have all the material goods, we are the most depressed we are the most anxious. We are the most nervous. We are the most um, grief stricken, unsure, unsteady mm -hmm. group of people that you have ever met. And we have all the material possessions that we could want. And so our burden here in the United States is one that is, and this is the thing about it, and this is what we do here in this country, US. We, because we have the outer appearance that everything is good, we are in a massive game of pretend. And we pretend as if everything is okay. Because from the outside looking in, it is. And, and we are, we become these fake, phony, inauthentic people <laughs> because everybody here is pretending that you are whole and we are not, right? And so what that does is in our pretending that everything is okay, we are never able to be healed. We're never able to be vulnerable long enough to experience a true healing and a true transformation. And that is something that I would have never known unless I had traveled to these other places. Because not one nurse in Kenya came up to me and said, I have anxiety about the test. Not one nurse came up to me and said, I don't know if I can do it. They came to me saying, how do I get it done? What do I need to do? My, my motivation today was this. Can I do it? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, yes no so i mean as, as you're speaking though um as, as you're speaking mm -hmm. um you're really you're talk you're speaking in um prophetic terms okay because it's based on the reality of now okay make a plan make so a plan for with, me with the prophecy god tells us what's going to happen before it happens so that when it does happen you can know what God said was true. Okay. So if you're just speaking the reality, you're speaking the reality of prophecy that was foretold. Okay. 
but we're here in the now. So it's now. It's, it's now. It's now. Okay, I got you. I got you. So what you described in terms of the American cultural need or what you've seen from students here mm -hmm. versus students there, mm -hmm. et cetera, um, read this portion of scripture. This is um, a description of the church of Laodicea. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, and then I'm going to show the mission of Christ. Um, so read this for me, please. Uh, Revelations chapter three, verses 14 through 18. Okay, you want me to read it? Yes. Okay, please. all right. Okay, Revelations chapter three, verses 14, 14 through, through 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. And unto the church, and, um, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? These things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would that thou were hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will, uh, neither cold nor hot, mm -hmm. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou may be rich and white raiment and thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with assal that thou mayest see. And so that the facade of of being good, the facade of um, having it all, being clothed, the, the mm -hmm. facade of being wealthy or rich or being in a room of carpet and chandeliers. Oh my like, goodness! That's only something that you know, kings <laughs> would have in that in that setting, right? Oh my goodness! Yes, um, because the feeling that you know, just being in a privilege doesn't allow us to see the naked, the condition, the condition. So. If you're in the condition and you know you're in the condition, right? You don't have to pretend. Yes. But if you're in the condition and you're pretending and you don't know how bad things really are, right? Mm -hmm. um, then you feel exposed. Mm -hmm. You feel um, that mm -hmm. heaviness. You do you feel, feel it. You feel it, but right? you don't know why. And so what what he's saying is, you have some good things, but they're really nothing. You know, like you're, the good things, the we good have. things that you have, it, it's really meaningless. So Christ is saying, I, I counsel you to get your good things from me, like buy your gold from me. Mm. Like, don't go to the mall kiosk and get the mm -hmm. stuff that's going to turn your neck green. Like you're mm -hmm. walking around with that, <laughs> you know, because you're saying I'm increased, like I have goods. Um, but really, you're in a, in a, in a, a poor state or a poor condition. Wow. Not realizing it. And then he says, anoint your eyes with ISAP so you can actually see what's going on around you. Yeah. So you can see the conditions of of where you are. Yeah. Um, and so that was foretold in terms of the condition, the culture, the mindset that would be prevalent here and now. Wow. Uh, and, and so when you walked into the room, um, you felt uh, understanding from the spirit of God that the mission of Christ was at hand to help heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. So the way that you felt going into the room is how Christ felt coming into the world. Mm. Mm. Like coming into the world and feeling and seeing the brokenness on his people. Yeah, wow. And so in Isaiah, he states the mission as this, it says, and that's why I'm saying like this, like it had to be the Holy Spirit that revealed that to you because Christ said the spirit of the, of, of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, mm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Mm. And there were more, there was mourning in the room, but it had not yet been revealed. The spirit of God had to reveal that. 
Then it says, and three says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion and to give them beauty for ashes. Yeah. To give them beauty wow. for ashes and the oil of joy for their tears and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, wow. that they may be called trees of righteousness in the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And so in order for God to be glorified in that room, the spirit of heaviness had to be addressed. The wow. spirit of brokenness had to be uh, had to be shut down. The spirit of blindness had to be lifted. And, and wow. so the purpose of doing that was that so God can be glorified in their testimony, in their journey. Wow. And, and so he doesn't want us to be in that state. Now, like the poor might be with us always, but not the poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. He's more concerned about your spiritual well-being than your financial well-being. And so with Remar, we're encouraging you. Yes, go after your goals. Reach um, the highest pinnacle that God will allow you to reach. Um, secure a financial future for your family. But more than that, secure a spiritual uh, eternity with your God, right? Don't mm -hmm. allow the spirit of heaviness mm -hmm. to overtake and overshadow the glory that your story and your journey will bring uh, towards your God. It's so tough. It's so tough to be in the midst of a trial mm -hmm. and see or have something terrible happen to you. And then have to remember i have to remember these things mark but that's where we have to remember the promises also mm -hmm. so if if we keep reading in verse four it says that they shall build up old wastes mm -hmm. and they shall raise up former desolations and they shall repair the wasted cities and the desolations of many generations so in other words if we it's when we recognize um the conditions of dilapidation yeah. is when repairs can begin yeah it's when we That's see true. the foundations are not as strong as they were yeah that they can be fortified and and built back up so like being just acknowledging where you are revisiting revisiting where you seeing are the condition yeah seeing what happened yeah taking accountability instead of like trying to just pretend that it never happened yep. or that it doesn't exist you can't build on a bad foundation yeah and that's true. That's as we said yesterday, like God can't change who you're pretending to be. Like he can't train. He he won't like you need to you need to be walking in all truth. Like you need to be walking in all truth. Mm -hmm. And you if you're so busy pretending you're wasting time, you're really wasting time pretending that everything is OK when it's really not. Yeah. And you can only you can only be so happy because all of your energy is given to pretending <laughs> for sure oh, and, and when man. we stop pretending when we stop pretending um that everything is okay and really give it to god that's when he makes it that's when he recreates it like that's where he gives the beauty for ashes yes but until you recognize that you're holding on to an urn you can't get the beauty because you're not exchanging the ashes mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yes. if you say well i already have the beauty then you can't exchange the beauty for ashes. If you say like everything's okay, then he can't give you the oil of joy for the morning. Like you have to recognize, like okay, this is this is this really happened. Yes, this it's is really happened. This is, this is this is this. I'm here, um, but my God wants doesn't want me to stay here. He wants to build me up, um, and, and there's no question about it. Like there's no question if he wants to build you up. Mm -hmm. It's no question can he build you up. It's only question is, are you willing to let him? Are you willing to stop pretending and get the help that you need? Monday motivation. That's it. That's it. Monday but motivation. It, I mean, it was powerful just to be in the room. It was powerful. Like, beautiful. 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 So like... thank you. Thank you for hosting this free NCLEX review in Orlando. We had uh, we we were not supposed to be there. We were. Well, we were supposed to, yes, let me <laughs> we say were, this. We, were. we, <laughs> we were. were supposed to be there, but it was not on the schedule. Like, yeah, we about to do Orlando. Yeah. No, Orlando was literally a calling. Mm -hmm. It was literally a calling. Yeah. Because. Yeah. 
And then also um, we met we met some folks from uh, Advent Health University. Yeah. Uh, and they came through and, and, and blessed the group with prayer and yes, um, just concern. And um, and so there's some local uh, folks that are here um, that want to help, want to reach out. And it's just acknowledging that you need help because there's more people that signed up, even though the room was packed. The room like, was packed. It, it was packed, like over 600, close to 700 folks. There was more people that signed up that said, hey, I want to come and, and just didn't make whatever step that was um in order to be there and so it's very important that if you recognize that you need help that you set a path towards getting that and then follow through yeah um, with that as well yeah and then don't let fear block your block your blessings don't do it yes don't yes yes it. i asked um just a lot of people like you know they're nervous they're anxious and it's like all right what are we doing about it what are we going to do about it because the way that people um, came up to me and they, and they boldly professed, I'm struggling with anxiety. I'm afraid. I, you know, and I feel like sometimes that's the first time they may have said that out loud to somebody because people mm -hmm. were saying that to me with tears, tears. tears. in their eyes. Yep. They were saying, I'm afraid. I'm nervous. I can't shake this anxiety. And I'm just like, praise the Lord, like praise the Lord. You're saying it. Mm -hmm. So now we can do something about it. Yeah. You know, we don't have to be pretending because I'm telling y'all in Orlando, y'all looked good Yeah. from the outside. I saw the Gucci. I saw the Chanel. I saw the matching shoes and purse. Y'all look amazing on the outside, but the inside was hurting hurting. And so um, I'm just happy that we were able to, you know, do the prayer, do the anointing. Uh, the prayer circle was going and yes. it was just yes. like, yes. oh yes. man, this is Remar. This is what we, this is what we had been missing. And, but you yeah. know what, but not really because in Kenya, <laughs> they were praying before the class. Usually it's us that prays. Um, but in Kenya, when we were there, the teachers were praying. They, hey, 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 we can't do no We can't do nothing. And so we pray and yeah. just seeing that from an educational uh, level was just amazing. Like the universities, whether they were religious affiliated or not, those people believed in prayer. Yes. Yes. Start yes. Yes. With God in with God. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. listen, let me brag on Orlando for a little bit. Okay, right? please do. Orlando, um, because we, we saw we saw both sides of the story. Right. Mm -hmm. um, before. So before the class even started. Before the class even started, right. um, Regina likes to find a place where she can just kind of get her thoughts together and just kind of rest before it's time to to come out yeah. and present, right? Mm -hmm. um, we There was a nurse that came. It was her birthday. Ah, oh, yes. The nurse came and it was her birthday and she had on uh, like a, a pink top and um, she was dressed like she was ready to go out for her birthday. She um, and she she brought flowers. Yes, she did. And she said, I, I can't stay. It's my birthday, but I just wanted to bring Regina her flowers. She did. And so we we brought her to the back where Regina was. Yeah. And she proceeded to share her testimony. She proceeded. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. She brought flowers. She <laughs> brought flowers, guys. She brought flowers. So she proceeded amazing. to share her testimony mm -hmm. and give Regina her roses yes. because she passed the NCLEX. And after six years yes. uh, of being a, a CNA, I believe, mm -hmm. um, after and she went from from CNA to RN, BSN. Uh, and, and so she came and testified and gave Regina her flowers behind the scenes. That's true. Right. Behind the scenes. Yeah, she did. And, and so um, the spirit of God was certainly moving. And, and, and you notice, God, whenever somebody is showing joyfulness and gratitude, gratitude yeah. from the heart. She didn't have to do it. She didn't have to buy roses. She didn't have to come by on her birthday. Um, she said that her guy had some plans for her. And she said, no, I, for my birthday, I just want to go here and give this to Regina. And we can do anything else afterwards. So she came and did that. So many also, people. there was um, there was another young lady um, who uh, is a uh, who is. Uh, she said her her husband passed away. Yeah. Said her husband passed away um, maybe a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. After that, she went on to study theology. Yeah. Uh, and she became a minister, and she was telling us how she uh, speaks throughout um, various countries in Africa. Yeah. Nurse Marley. Nurse Marley, and so Marley. she she gave. Um, speaking of uh, um, 
uh, putting on a, a cloak of righteousness uh, or clothing change. She yeah, gave, she gave uh, a beautiful some, gift to Regina and Salome, our, our daughter, gave her a prayer shawl, yep. two prayer shawls, one for Regina, one yep. for our oldest daughter, yep. and also a book that she's written. Yep. And uh, then I got a prayer journal from another nurse wow. as well. In Orlando? In Orlando. Yeah. yeah. So I met some amazing people. Everybody that I spoke to personally, um, they embraced me. I met them. We, you know, we walked in together. I think I see Joan is on me and her. <laughs> we walked in the class together. I just met so many nurses, nurses yes. that showed up from Tallahassee, from um, Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. They drove, they all helped over. all over nurses. They just, you know, some flew in, came and just volunteered, volunteered. Came early, said, I don't know if you need some help, but I'm here to help. I mean, so that's what, um, yeah. you know, that's not even something that we plan for. But that just speaks to the nurses here in Orlando and what they were about. They were there to be a blessing, yep. um, but also, I guess, ultimately to receive a blessing. So thank you so much. I just wanted to motivate somebody that the, the power of God can be real and it can be life changing and transformative. Yes, but it is. You have to get to you have to get to a place where you're able to acknowledge that you need that experience. You need that help. And so we were able to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So listen, um, let us go into a session of prayer. Yeah. Let's go into a session of prayer, guys. Because um, if you missed it yesterday, guess what? It's available yes. to you right now. We're going to pray yes. together. Wow. If you so, need prayer, just say me. Yep. Just put me on the screen. Raise your hand. Say me. Please pray for me, Brother Mark, Elder Mark. Please pray for me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. We see you. We see you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Elizabeth, Lucy, yeah. Veronica, we will be praying for you. Mo, we got you. We'll be praying for you, Latasha. Yes, Lord. Absolutely. Yes. Nurse Bloom, uplifting. We will be praying for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Nurse Wright, Nurse Wimba. It's so beautiful. We'll praying for you. It's so beautiful. Absolutely. Um, and we all stand in the need of prayer. We do. Um, we do. And this is, once again, this is the mission of Christ to, to, to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up their wounds. That sounds a lot like nursing to me. It does. It does. It? Yes, it does. Yeah, he's like, I came here to nurse. Mm, like, that's what I'm here for. The ultimate like, nurse. That's Ooh. what I'm that's what I'm here for. Christ nursing, mm -hmm. Christ method. Wow, that's amazing. Um, in, in terms of just even what we talked about last week, this goes right along with last week where we talked about the woman with the issue of blood and Jesus saying, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace. And so right now everybody is stepping out on faith and just believing that mm -hmm. this prayer, this prayer is going to help get them through the next moments, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Praying for marriages also. I see that. Pray for me and my husband. Praying against anxiety. Praying for peace. Praying for grief for those who have lost their spouses. Yep. Yep. Those that are mourning. Mm -hmm. That God is going to give you to remove the spirit of heaviness and to give you a garment of praise. A garment okay. of praise. Wow. To remove the fear. Mm -hmm. doubt mm -hmm. um of course test anxiety people are asking for okay relationships somebody needs a good somebody needs a good um partner, partner. somebody needs a good spouse mm -hmm. a good husband a good wife mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely all right let's pray Our Father and our God, we come humbly before your throne of grace. Yes, Lord. I'm asking, Lord, for uh, the forgiveness of our sins. Please, Father. And the cleansing that leads to righteousness. Thank you, Lord. As in the room, Lord, was sensed the spirit of heaviness, also was sensed the Holy Spirit and the spirit of joy. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we ask that in recognizing the heaviness, 
that even more so we're able to obtain and receive a spirit of joy, a spirit of confidence, a spirit of overcomers, um, because it was it was the mission, Lord, of your son, Christ Jesus, to uh, to heal the brokenhearted, Lord, and to to bind up the wounds of those that have been injured in the past. Thank you, Lord. That's his mission. That's what he said he came to do. Thank you, God. And so we 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 ask that you would apply that to the nurse, to the Remar nurses, Lord. Right now, God, right now. That you would walk beside them and even carry them along this nursing journey. Also, Lord, that you would give them the same, if not greater burden for eternal things, that just as much as they desire to have this nursing license, they would also desire to have the crowns of gold that you have set aside for your children that they would also desire not to only receive acknowledgement from the state boards of nursing, but that they would receive acknowledgement from you with the pronouncement of well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. Lord, you have made them more than conquerors. You have promised Lord that in you, that we are to be the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. So help us, Lord, to overcome a bottom mentality and to embrace a heavenly thought pattern that says with you and with God is possible. That says, Lord, that with you, I, I, I can, I, I will, and I must mm -hmm. Thank you, God. pass that NCLEX. And Lord, as you lead them towards this journey of success, I ask, Lord, that you would allow them to be a blessing to others so that they can bring honor and glory to your name. We thank you, Lord, for being a God that hears us, a God that sees us, and a God that knows us better than we know ourselves. Lord. Even when we pretend, Lord, you see exactly who we are and you know exactly what we stand in need of, mm -hmm. whether it's for marriages, as has been said, pray for me and my spouse or me and my husband as, as they have written. We're asking for that blessing of the household, Lord. We're asking for a blessing over the children. We're asking for a blessing, Lord, over all of those that are grieving from the loss or the sickness of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need a special touch and a he healing from you, oh God. Thank you, God. Be with them even now so that they may be able to stand upright and have a clear mind for you. We thank you, Lord, for just blessing the Remar nurse family. Thank you for blessing Professor Regina um, with a heart for the Remar nurses and for the heart mm -hmm. for nurses all around the world. I ask Lord that you would give her increase, uh, increase her territory, increase her knowledge, increase her connections um, so that you might be honored without limits. We thank you and we're careful to give your name the praise, the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wow. What a great uh, Monday. Thank you for being with us. I know we have some um, hearts that feel lighter. Yes, 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 yes. We have some directions moving forward. Um, and I don't, I, you know, I just love to, I love to, to, to open up this space for us. This is extremely unique in nursing education, extremely unique. Okay. Um, I did promise, I did promise that I would do question and answers. And so I don't want to neglect that time where people wanted to ask me questions. And so if your mind and your heart is clear um, and you you don't have any um, any need for questions and answers, I do ask, I do ask that you go and attempt to be a blessing to somebody today because your burden 
has now been lifted. Mm. So you are free to be the hands and feet of Christ today. So be a blessing to somebody. Bless somebody on today. And even the smallest ways, that's just what I'm asking for you. Um, but I do want to open it up for questions and answers for me specifically. All right. So um, I want to transition into that. Let's see this first question from Brenda. Okay. Thank you, guys. Hi, Regina. What do you think? I go ahead and pick a date for my NCLEX exam so I can be more serious. I'm someone who gets motivated when I see others studying with me and I take it as a challenge. Um, I do. I think you need to use what you have <laughs> to keep you motivated. So if you find that you're a little bit competitive and you, you know, you like to study with others, then yes, go ahead and set that date so that you can have a plan moving forward. Or if that deadline is coming and yes. you know that lights a fire. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Absolutely. Um, I would say get in the, if you have the V2, do the study 30 day option. Do the 30 day option because that will challenge you to get it done in that time. So set your date. Think about maybe 30 days out, set your date and go ahead and do it. You can do it. Okay. Anything else? Um, I paid for the V2 and quick facts on Friday. When am I going to get it? So team Remar is off on the weekend. So today is just Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, you should be receiving in your email that you signed up for your tracking information. Um, if you're still looking for that, or you just want to know ahead of time, go ahead and send me an email support at remarreview.com. But usually uh, tr shipping is three to four business days, mm -hmm. three to All four right. business days. So one, today would be the first business day mm -hmm. since ordering on Friday. Yep. So it definitely depends on um, where you are located to as well. All right. Because you didn't say if you were national or international, but go ahead and send, send us an email True. support at remarreview.com. Okay. Um, how much are the, when is the next live schedule? So my next live schedule is going to be when? Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Every Monday and Wednesday, I go live. Um, um, every Monday and Wednesdays, I go live for. Uh, uh, NCLEX review, but I know you mean in person. I am, um, I'm still working on some locations, but I don't have anything solidified as of yet. So please keep me in prayer. But on Wednesday, I will be going um, live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. Okay. All right. Um, thanks for letting me open up. Okay. Uh, here's Thomas, what time? All right, um, Regina, my test is next month, but I am still nervous. So I'll just say the, um, the, the test for NCLEX, we have to think about it and we have to turn our lights how we think about it. You should be nervous, all right? Being nervous is normal. This is a big test. You're going to do something new that you have not experienced before, right? You're gonna take the NCLEX, you're gonna get a new set of questions. So it's okay for you to be nervous. It's not okay for you to be paralyzed. Mm. That's not okay. So um, try to um, enjoy the process if that's a thing. Try to enjoy the process. Um, be ready to study. Be ready that you're preparing for your next job. That's how I want you to look at it. You're doing something to prepare you for your career, your next destination. If you have a resistance to that, then that means that you are telling yourself that it's okay to stay where you are. It's okay to remain at your current employment. It's okay to not take on this challenge to get to the next step. And that's just not the truth. So you need to be telling yourself the truth, which is I'm ready for the next thing. I'm ready for the next level. I want to have my nursing license because everything that you're putting out, anything that's negative or discouraging, that's what's going to show up on your exam. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Um, that's, that's it. I thought it would be live on YouTube. Yeah. So no, no, <laughs> my in-person reviews are not going to be live on YouTube. My in-person reviews won't be live on YouTube. Um, they're in person, but my Mondays and Wednesdays will be live. Okay. Mm, if you, um, 
how can I get the new V2 bank questions? I'm asking because I already renew my inscription twice, but I get the same questions keep coming up. I'm in the trial mode now and I want to get the subscription to the, to the new V2. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we need to look at your account and we need to make sure that you are so in the Getting V2, the can't you select uh, used, mm -hmm. new, or unused questions? You can. You can. Um, so the V2, you should be able to select which questions that you want to see. Also, um, you should, you'll get instant access to the question bank in the V2. So right. maybe there's, there's, there's 2,500 um, questions. There's so many questions. Yeah. There's so many questions in there. So you should not keep getting the same questions unless you're repeating the test or something, but just email me so that we can look specifically at what's going on. Cause mm -hmm. it's hard for us to do it. Yeah. Interesting. Just when you're creating a test, if you want to see the new questions, make sure that you're selecting the option for new. Yes. Um, will the format for NCLEX be changing this April? No, actually, we'll not see another change again until the year 2026. But I know you may have heard that um, in regards to maybe selling some questions or trying to do so. Please, the exam will not be changing again for three years, three years. Well, two years now. Remar nurse here, nurse Gordon. I passed my NCLEX RN in just 85 questions using your V2 and program. Thank you so much for your knowledge. I'm immensely grateful. Immensely grateful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much uh, for letting me know that you passed. That is the goal. Passing the NCLEX and when you can do it in 85 questions, that is also, ooh, that is also amazing. Um... No plans for coming to South Carolina yet. Have I decided for the date for the Cleveland review? Um, I was looking to have it at a church in Cleveland. I don't know if we have enough time now because it was supposed to be like in like in the next week. And I haven't. Um, oh, no. It's no. not. It's not going to. Yeah, it's not going to happen. In the near future. In the near future. Because. It, it, it does. We, we do allow it. We do like to have at least like two or three weeks for people to sign up for the class. And I don't think that gives people enough time, time. as much as I would love to do it. As I'm still I'm actually still in Florida right now. So I'm not even getting to Ohio until the this weekend. Um, the word <coughs> church. Is that is that a place? That is a place, that is a place in Cleveland. The word church. Hmm. What's your message, Jen? I must have missed it. So um, I'll be on the West Coast, though, actually. Like I said, for the month of May, um, I'll be on the West Coast. So that is where if I do a class, it will be out there. Congratulations. Your quick facts did not have specialty. Is there any way I can get the book that, that have quick facts? Mm. Um, I'm not sure. Can you type that again? For yeah. Can you type that again? I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, yes. Come on, girl. Next week. <laughs> oh, um, I, I don't know if they, that doesn't give everybody enough time. And I, I would just do it for a small amount of people, but I, then I would get a whole bunch of <laughs> like yeah. people. Why didn't you wait for me? But listen, um, if you um, are familiar with like a, a venue um, in your area that would host 300 or more. Mm -hmm. That's what we really nurses, need. That's what we need. Let us know. And I guarantee you we'll be there. Definitely. Yeah. And and when I say in a venue, I'm not just saying like, Hey, you know, call the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. stadium and, and let them, you know, let them know you're coming. But if you have a connection, uh, if you have, um, somebody in authority that, um, would like to host Remar nurses, um, and would do so because we have, you know, free classes and it's just an amazing thing for the community. Yeah. Um, please let us know and we'll, we'll be certain to follow up with any Definitely. serious, any serious contact. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that if you want us there and you have the power or you have the connection for somebody. a place, just let us know that that's way helpful. Um, cause sometimes people just say like Indiana or New Mexico, um, but that, that takes a lot of work for us mm -hmm. to do that. And, and that's why we were able to, uh, to go to Kenya and host and have so many classes and be a blessing there. 
um, because we partner with a local organization, uh, Mm -hmm. a national organization in Kenya um, called Kenya Nurse. And so they brought us in and said, we want to work with you. And um, so now we're we're partnering to do some amazing things uh, Mm -hmm. in the continent of Africa. And so if you're an organization or know an organization that would like to partner, please let us know. Absolutely. uh, And we will be in your city um, by God's grace. Question here is, um, my subscription expired. Um, It's easy to renew your V2. I think somebody had asked that. Yeah. How can I renew my V2? When your subscription expires, um, you go into the trial mode. If you have canceled your subscription, you'll go into the trial mode. And there's a banner at the top of the screen that says you're in trial mode upgrade here. Mm -hmm. It's a blue banner. If you click that banner, you're able to renew your subscription. Yeah. Okay. And just to be sure, everybody that's on right now, you should either be in the trial mode for the NCLEX V2 or have your V2 subscription. Mm -hmm. The only reason um, you should not have a V2 subscription is if you're not testing like within the next three months. Um, But if you're testing within the next three months, you should definitely have a V2 subscription. Mm -hmm. If you're outside of that, then the trial mode is okay. Um, Or if you're international, if you want more time, you can do a six month uh, subscription as well. Um, But you should either be in the V2 by the full subscription or the trial so you can experience what it's like to train with Professor Regina. Awesome. I love this. Thank you, Regina and your husband. I passed on my first try. Congratulations, Sloan. Like that name. Absolutely. Congratulations. Um, Somebody asked, did, um, it does your, does the quick facts come with the V2? It does come with the V2 quick facts. So the, here it Mm -hmm. is. When you get the quick, when you get the V2, then you have the quick facts book. You have the downloadable printed workbook that you print. Plus you have my lecture videos. That's the computer with the um, question bank in it. So those are the components of V2. Now, it is possible that some people purchase V2 without quick facts, and that is because they already have it. It's because they already have the quick facts book. Right. But for most of you, when you purchase the V2, you are going to get the quick facts and you are going to get the, um, the, the printed workbook and also the question bank. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Mark. So that's it. Somebody says, thank you. I have my quick facts and my printed V2 workbook mm-hmm. and lecture. Awesome. That's well, exactly what we want. Okay. Can't wait to hear your testimony after you pass in clicks. That's right, everyone. Okay. I have kept you today for much longer than I had originally planned, but some of you are still here to the very end rocking with us. And I think that says a lot about. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have. Shout out to the husbands. I have V2, my husband purchased for me. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Great husbands, great husbands. <laughs> and supporting wives. And supporting wives. How much time do you recommend for product use? Um, We have the time frames there for you all. And you have to decide which one is going to be best for you. For if you have a test coming up, you can do the 30-day program for sure. That is something that can definitely be done. My program has been done in two weeks or 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. Um, If you're in nursing school, you have the ability to do the six-month purchase of the V2, and that means you're using it to help you get through nursing school. You're doing it on the weekends. You're doing it on your break so that it can prepare you for your exit exams, your HESI exit exams, and then your NCLEX. So it really just depends on when you are testing. The product does come with a daily study calendar. So if we're talking about how much time you should be studying per day, that's going to be in your study calendar. And so make sure that you're using that and that that will have you studying less than three hours a day. Yep. Yes. Even if you graduated two years ago, if you graduated yes. two years ago. Oh, my goodness. You're in such a good position. Mm-hmm. You're in the best position. This program will work really well for you. We have people um, that have been in <laughs> been out of school since the 90s mm-hmm. and they are able to do V2 and pass NCLEX. So yes. two years ago. Mm, you're good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you guys think there's scammers around? Absolutely. There's always scammers around. 
For those of us that purchased the hard copy, what are we expecting? So if you purchased, there's only, well, the hard copy. The hard copy that you can get is of Quick Facts. You will be getting, receiving that book. And the, if you purchase the hard copy of the V2 workbook, those will come in the mail. Those will come in the mail to you. Yeah. And the hard okay. copy does have a bonus section uh, of the clinical judgment uh, questions mm -hmm. uh, in the back. And it also has more of the text already completed for you. Um, so if you're uh, um, you know, in a hurry and want to um, really focus in on your studies, go for the hard copy um, print out. Yes. And it's just easier for yeah. them. To but it also out. comes with the uh, digital workbook as well for the V2 workbook. There is no digital quick facts. That's not an option. So that's always physical. Um, but the workbook does come with a digital copy for everyone. Um, or you can upgrade to the physical copy for the workbook as well. And just remember, when you purchase V2, when you're purchasing the V2, those lectures in the V2, you can start right away. You do not have to wait for the Quick Facts book to come to you. Right. Get in there, print out the first maybe couple pages of the workbook and go ahead and begin the lectures. Yes, we. I took NCLEX and failed a lot of case studies. Does V2 have case studies? Yes, V2 has case studies, but more importantly, V2 has the content information that you probably need to watch first before doing case studies. Honestly, if you take an NCLEX and you failed it, I would highly recommend that you start by watching my lecture videos, please. So the content is going to inform you on how, how to, to answer, answer the, the case yeah, studies. Yeah, the case studies, the case studies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, that's my advice, especially if you're a repeat test taker, you failed the NCLEX before, then this is the program that you should be finding yourself working through. Yep. There's nothing wrong with you failing the NCLEX. That's not a problem for me. The problem is if you don't have a plan on how you're going to move forward, because then you stay stuck in that place for way too long. Yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong with failing the NCLEX, but you have to have a plan to move forward to test again. And with the V2, if you haven't gone to the website and you're not familiar with the pricing, you can start with a 30 day uh, subscription for under a hundred dollars. Yeah. It's really simple. Yeah. It's there for very you. affordable, very yeah. simple straight to the point information. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for um, allowing us to have this question and answer session. I hope that um, we were able to shed some light on many different things today. We talked about lung sounds, which was really awesome and getting through that and practicing the questions and, mm, and doing the spiritual study, doing a spiritual study. So thank you, Mark, for joining us today and thank you for just you know the position that in the role that you play in remar you put the mar in mm -hmm. remar you put the mar in remar and i love that um i love that i love that so thank you all because you put the nurse in remar nurse <laughs> and you allow us to have an amazing nursing community and the four of us you know me and mark and god and you mm -hmm. we make it happen we make it happen. And so on Wednesday, we will be back and we will be discussing. I can't remember the topic. Um, I can't remember the topic right now. I never I never really have a solid topic until the day of. Well, <laughs> and so I have some ideas, but I'm not sure just yet. So I will see you all on. I will see you all on Wednesday night, 9 p.m. East Coast time. East Coast time because I'm back, baby. <laughs> oh. But Back you never on the time, I never did. Never no, but I mean, getting that one. Oh man, morning, we were in the morning. Philippines. Even in the Philippines, doing Wednesday, winning Wednesday on Thursday at nine a.m. <laughs> that was funny. It was so funny. It was yeah. just so funny. So, um, thank you guys for always rocking with us, no matter where we are. Winning Wednesday is going to be winning definitely. Oh, somebody saying do kahoot hmm. on Wednesday. Hmm. Mm. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe. perhaps. Oh, maybe. no, no, because we won't have the thing. The tech. Yeah, we won't have the tech to do. Cause not this week. Maybe next week, but we'll not this week. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This was an amazing live. One of my best, okay? One of my best, best lives, I think, just because of the, the power of the Holy Spirit and what he did yesterday that continues yeah. to carry on. So see you guys later. Remember, we say this all the time. 
you, you can, can, you will, you, you must, must pass, pass NCLEX. Bye-bye.